Hi there. Last week in the Los Angeles Photojournalism Group, we had Tech Week. Next week is Content Week. So I thought here in the middle might be a nice time to talk about uh, photography that I find problematic. Um, I just, I feel like photography is such a powerful tool that I, I, I almost feel like we have an obligation to do good, um, to try to use this incredibly beautiful and powerful tool to create the maximum amount of happiness in this world um, and to minimize suffering if we can, where we can. And it's a complicated world. There are a lot of moving parts. Photography doesn't solve everything by any means, but I've talked in the past about how a photographer like Lewis Hine has been able to have such great social change across an entire nation or how a photographer like Nan Golden uh, was able to use photography to express identity to develop such a, a more inclusive and diverse and, and tolerant world. And beautiful work like those and so many other photographers, I just, I, I find some more troubling and I, I, I just wanna throw out there. Um, you know, when I see a talented photographer collaborate with a crazy high-end retoucher in order to manufacture images uh, that work to convince you and me that our lives are not complete, that they're shallow and they're somehow lacking if we don't wear $200 tennis shoes. How is that making anybody happier? How is that addressing anybody's suffering? My country, the United States, it's theoretically a capitalist country, so okay, maybe we need these marketing images. Another category that disturbs me even more is how much of photography consists of old men creating sexualized images of young women and girls. And again, I just can't for the life of me figure out how these images make anybody happier or you know, address anyone's suffering. I just, I don't think they help. Um, and look, you know, as, as a heterosexual male, I am not immune to those images. My eye goes to those images too, and that's the problem. You know, the photographs that we choose to make versus the photographs that we don't make, the photographs that we choose to view versus the photographs that we choose not to view, the books we read versus the books we don't, the films we watch versus the films we don't. Every time you make one of these choices, you are programming the psychology of your own brain and in a small way, you are programming our culture. Um, the human brain is a bunch of different things, right? We got this like old reptilian brain down here and we got this, it's a big brain. It's got this reptile stuff going on down here. We got this little bit of consciousness up here. What is consciousness? Consciousness, most of the stuff we do in the day is not conscious. We don't tell our heart to beat. We don't really tell our feet to walk. We just, you know, most of us are, are fortunate enough to just walk down the street. Um, this little bit of consciousness is used for planning. It's used for developing things. Um, if you have an encounter with someone and then an hour later you're frustrated with yourself and you say, God, why did I react that way? Why did I do that? That was so stupid of me. That was this low brain instinctively responding to something and you didn't have the opportunity to choose to be the person you really wanted to be. If you leave it at that, the next time that situation comes up, you will again let this low brain take over and do things you will regret later. The solution is to use this consciousness to program yourself, to program this non-conscious part of your brain to do what you want, to exercise your free will to be the person you want to be. And again, when we make images, uh, when we view images, that's what we're doing. We're programming ourselves to privilege these images and to not care so much about these images or what they're about. Um, if you think about driving stick shift in a car, you know, the first time you ever tried to drive stick, when you first learned, it was a really complicated procedure. Press the clutch down, grab the shift lever, move from uh, second to third, let the clutch up, apply gas, not too little, not too much, not too fast, not too slow. It was a lot of thinking, a lot of conscious processing. And then after a while, your conscious brain stepping through the motions of shifting a car uh, programmed your brain. And you, today, you know, you would be 
at a dead standstill at a stop sign and in a matter of seconds you would enter a freeway, accelerate to 60 miles an hour, and you wouldn't even know when you switched gears. You wouldn't even know what RPM you switched at because you just did this thing automatically. It wasn't required to be conscious anymore. You had programmed your brain to do this thing. And, and if I asked you what RPM did you switch at, you wouldn't know. But when you were learning, you picked some RPM like between 2,000 and 3,000 or between 3,000 and 4,000. And whatever RPM you trained yourself to change gears at, that's the RPM if we had a little camera looking at when you change gears because you don't even know because it's not conscious anymore. Uh, that's the RPM that you would most of the time be changing at and you would never change that unless you said, you know what, uh, changing gears at, you know, at 4,000 RPM, maybe it, I would be better off, maybe a little more fuel efficient if I change at 3,000. So I'm going to train myself and now you need to re-enter this conscious phase where you're paying attention and you're, you're going through these steps until you reprogram your brain to do something different. And then you would be changing gears at a different RPM and you wouldn't think about it once again. So when we choose to make and view and privilege sexualized images of young women instead of social images of people, you know, in adverse situations, struggling to find a solution, groups maybe that work with at-risk youth, they have slogans like jobs, not jails. What is, what's that about? Maybe I should go hang out with them. Yeah, I could get some cool lights in a studio and get somebody in a bikini and wouldn't that be great? Maybe what these people are doing to make young people part of our culture instead of sending them off to prison, maybe that's a better use of your camera. So, we program our brains every time we choose to make this photo instead of that one, to view this photo instead of that one, books, films, all of it. Um, so my, my message, my suggestion for old guys with cameras, and let me say that I'm not just the president of the old guys with cameras club, I'm also a member. Um, my message is instead of manufacturing sexualized images of young women and girls young enough to be your daughter, what if you used that camera to make images that your daughter would be proud to say, my father created that image. In his small way, he's making this world a little bit better place for a few more people to live in.